What's up, everybody? Welcome back to an all-new exciting episode of Conflicts. Today, we'll be looking at the top 15 robots you can buy right now. Now, this is more geared towards the whole humanoid robots, so just keep that in mind. Now, obviously, we reviewed a lot of different robots, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Number 15. It is the Leo robot. It is a fighting humanoid robot that is really cool, mainly because it's made out of carbon fiber, and it can punch, kick, and do a variety of special moves which we have never seen in any other humanoid robot. Now, the pros of it are that it's really cool in terms of going ahead and fighting, but the only downside is that it is very lightweight, meaning it breaks quite easily and does tip over from time to time. Number 14, JD Humanoid Robot. One of our first humanoid robots we previously reviewed that's actually kind of cool just because its whole modular aspect allowed to go ahead and freely program it to the full extent in terms of application as well as building on top of it. Now, the only downside of it, it does look kind of weird and has a weird alien kind of look to it, so it's not as cool as some of the other humanoid robots, which is kind of the down aspect of it. Uh, number 13, Lynx. Now, Lynx is actually a pretty cool, interesting robot, uh, mainly because it's one of the most highly sophisticated robots for Ubitech at its time. Now, the only downside is that it was a previous Alpha 1S2 or Alpha 2 that was out that literally this here is just the same robot or a carbon copy of that robot when they go ahead and introduced Alexa to it. Now, it is kind of slow in terms of servos, but in terms of overall functionality purpose of it, it's kind of neat. But again, it's very slow and it doesn't have the quick movements that you kind of see in other humanoid robots. And number 12 is the Hexa robot, a spider looking robot that crawls about that actually looks kind of cool and is quite intelligent. It has a variety of different sensors allowing to go ahead and climb over different obstacles, even climb up stairs, as well as over boxes to boxes, which is kind of neat. Now, the only downside with that robot is that the servos do kind of break, and once they misalign, it's kind of hard to realign it, and then the robot has a weird clumsy walk as it goes about. Number 11, Now Robot. Now, we haven't really reviewed it. However, we do have one in our presence. But then again, it's just a robot that is extremely overrated and it's extremely expensive. Now, it does have a lot of functionality. It has a lot of programmability. But again, for the price tag itself, <laughs> 15 grand, it is quite a good amount of change for something of that nature. Now, we have a lot of new robots coming out, which actually kind of do the same thing. So just keep that in mind. But overall, it's very sophisticated and it's very intelligent and it comes with a lot of quality parts. Number 10, the T5 robot, also known as a transformer robot. Now, we reviewed this, and it was actually kind of exciting to see. It's a RC car that turns into a robot that moves about and kind of fires and does a lot of different tricks, but again, it doesn't really offer much replay value. Uh, the RC car format itself is kind of neat, but it doesn't move as fast or it doesn't actually function as a typical RC car. The whole body kind of maneuvers itself in a way where it flexes, and that's kind of a weird downside of it. And in terms of the movement of the robot, it's it seems so unnatural that I just feel like it doesn't have much to replay itself with. Uh, number nine. Adobe Robot. Now, Adobe has been quite out for some time. It's a fun dancing robot that does a variety of different tricks. I mean, we even had a robot band of Adobe, which is kind of neat. But the only downside with this particular robot is that uh, once a servo does mess up, it's kind of hard to swap it out and it's kind of hard to maneuver it back to position, which is probably the only aspect that I didn't like. And in terms of the gait itself, the walking is just kind of unnatural and it just, just seems kind of childish at points. But then again, it's actually a very fun robot, very cool to look at and very entertaining for children as well as adults and has a lot of replay value and a lot of songs that you can go ahead and showcase. Number eight, Zeus. Now, Zeus is actually a very fan favorite robot. Now, you're probably wondering why is it number eight? Well, you know, besides the fact that it's really cool looking and has a lot of servos and has a lot of movement, uh, there's a lot of weird clunkiness that you don't really see. Mainly because the armor, if you have all the armor on, the robot can't fully flex the way it's supposed to, which is kind of kind of sad and this particular robot I've had to repair multiple times so just keep that in mind it's not easy to take care of but it definitely does look cool and definitely offers the part of a cool looking fighting robot but again it doesn't offer that fighting power that we see in some other popular robots as well. Uh, number seven, Alpha 1S Pro. Now, Alpha 1S has been out for some time. The Pro isn't really much different than the original. However, it just is a overall amazing robot. It does have a full functionality in terms of being able to move, uh, do different things, and it does take a good amount of durable use, so you can go ahead and push it to its limits without breaking anything, which is kind of neat. Now, this is one of the first robots we reviewed, so it's actually kind of exciting to see that it's still holding up to its name. 
Number six, the new Robotist Max Kit. Now, it's actually a great foundational robot. I think it's actually an amazing quality and it's very unique in terms of having a dual axis servos. However, there are some downsides of it, mainly because it does lack a lot of functionality. But again, it's a very brand new robot, so I do see it moving on and kind of moving up in terms of the other kits too, like the Kit 2 version, uh, kind of helping push it beyond its limits. Number five, Vector Robot. Now, Vector has actually a cute little robot that it replaced, it's supposed to replace Cosmo, and it's supposed to be the next level up, allowing you to go ahead and interact with it, uh, give it communication, and make it your own like computer pet. Uh, the only downside of it, since Anki kind of shut down, the servos are shutting down, uh, it's kind of kind of weird about should you buy this? I mean, the price of it literally just drop dead but then again that's actually a great replay value so if you guys want to purchase one of your very own it's actually a highly sophisticated robot at a bargain of a price now it's kind of a downside for all those who kickstarted it so yeah that's kind of where it falls in that aspect and that's why i would say that number falls under number five uh, number four, the infamous T5 robot. One of my favorite robots, mainly because it's high quality use and it looks amazingly awesome and it's made out of a very high durable feel. Now, it itself is a very tall robot and it moves quite fast for what it is. However, there is a bit of a downside in terms of it tipping over uh, as well as the way it kind of functions all together. I mean, you have to plug in a USB to go ahead and use the remote and it's kind of hard to purchase. It's not something available to the public. Uh, it's made by a private maker, so again, you you want it it does require some time to get your very own as well so number three Cosmo yes Cosmo is probably one of my favorite robots uh, definitely makes the top three I would say uh, why is it not number one I'll kind of explain in just a little bit mainly because Aki shut down ever since it shut down there's probably no growth for the robot uh, kind of wish they kind of continue on with the company it would have been very neat to see exactly where this robot goes in the future obviously you know it's a very cute friendly robot uh definitely probably one of my favorites and definitely a fan favorite than unless uh again the downside of it is that you know the company shut down so the servos uh, the servers are kind of like not there anymore and there's a lot of like misplacement of that whole issue goes and we don't know what the futures of this particular robot's going to be so it's kind of sad to see it go into the grave but you know it's still one of my top three Number two, Super Anthony. Probably one of my favorite humanoid robots just because of its most durable and fighting use. I mean, this thing packs a heavy, heavy punch. It's actually really cool and looks really unique and definitely a fan favorite among everyone and everybody who has ever seen it has always says that that is a fighting robot. Now, the only downside is when the servos do mess up, it does require some finesse to go ahead and swap them out. But other than that, it's not too difficult. And lastly, number one is the Ginker X robot. A brand new robot that we reviewed where we went to China to fight. It's actually the coolest robot we've seen yet, mainly because it, it literally has a spot on ability to fight. So you have the joystick control, giving you full functionality in terms of fighting. So you don't have those just typical punch moves, but you can go ahead and create your own. And then you have your own ability to create weapons, customize it, and have a lot of replay value. And when it comes to actually playing with it, probably one of my most favorite robots yet. And there you have it. These here are my top 15 robots in terms of fighting aspects go, as well as uh, functionality. I really enjoy them a lot, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys had any questions about any of the robots, feel free to comment down below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time. Take care now. Bye-bye.